Hi there, citrus lovers. Marceline here with you. Welcome back to our channel. And today we have an essential topic to discuss. Citrus is spider mite treatment and management. For those of you who grow citrus out there, especially for beginners, this video is for you. Now, citrus spider mites can be a real nuisance, but we're not. We've got you covered with some effective strategies to keep your plants healthy and spider mites free. So let's jump to it. All right, so before you try to spray your citrus with pesticide, you need to understand spider mites. Understanding the occurrence of spider mites, sign and symptoms will help you treat your citrus effectively. Now, spider mites are arachnids. They belong to a family, Tetranicidae. They are so small, you cannot see it through your naked eyes. You can only see the spider mites using uh, magnifying lenses like 10 10 10 or 20 20 20. now what a spider mite can do to your uh, can damage to your citrus they will fist on, on the sap of your citrus trees causing your uh, citrus leaves to turn yellow uh, die back twigs and if you don't treat the spider mites right away it will cause death in the plant now, <clears throat> this is a prevention. I'm going to show you how to prevent the spider mites before the actual treatment. Now, this is when you don't have infestation going on. So what you have to do with this hose, you hose your citrus with a strong stream of water and spray from top and down. This is going to discourage the spider mites to infest your citrus. Spider mites prepare hot dry season and we are now summer so we don't want the spider mites to get into our citrus trees so this is your prevention now the second prevention that you will need to do with your citrus is checking the tree regularly so when you are in the garden make sure you just check around uh, under under the leaves and you know the branches uh, check for sign and symptoms uh, the sign and symptoms of spider spider mite infestation you will see uh, leaves turning yellow and you are also noticing uh, speckling on the leaves so they have that uh, discoloration and die back on the branches so that is a spider mite so sometimes you see weaving on the leaves at the back and also on the branches now if the weaving uh, is already there meaning the infestation is at large so this is the time that it is hard for the citrus tree to recover but don't worry we will get into it and i'm going to show you how to get rid of them so you don't have spider mites on your citrus so that is the prevention that is your preventative measure uh, host your plants daily uh, <clears throat> the leaves so that it will knock off those spider mites and also check regularly now keep in mind that your citrus, if your citrus is healthy, so it is less likely to have infestation going on. So keep your citrus uh, healthy at all, all time. Sometimes you can't avoid, they, they will go into stress uh, depending on the environment. So you have to make sure they, have, uh, they receive proper amount of water, they receive proper amount of sunlight, and they, they receive good amount of nutrients. And now we talk about that, uh, <laughs> specific uh, specific needs of the plants sun sunlight water and uh, fertilizer also what causes uh, stress to the plants when you move them around and also when you transplant them so that is the opportunity of the pest to get in and devour your citrus all right now what if you have an infestation going on now in this video I will bring Greg Steven with me to explain more to it because he is also part of our of our channel to discuss any any problems in, of our citrus so maybe he can give you an insight all right so again that is the prevention now <clears throat> the second the second uh, treatment that you need to do is removing the uh, twig like if you see die back or if you notice that there is infestation of spider mite if this area is infested with spider mite you definite you definitely remove that branches 
take them off and put it in the bag, sealed it. Don't throw it on the ground because it can spread easily. So this is the principle of gardening. You have to make sure that everything is sterile, uh, everything is clean. The tree has to be cleaned up. There is no uh, dead leaves on the ground. And if you find some uh, dead leaves here, you have to remove it. Keep the area clean. <coughs> All right. Now, you already have the infestation going on. And then you are wondering how can you remove or how can you, uh, how can you keep this uh, spider mites, how to get rid of spider mites on citrus trees. So this might be your uh, question. Now, to get rid of them, so you already know that the infestation, to get rid of them, that you have to remove any infected leaves, all right? So Greg is here and uh, he is now spraying this citrus. So that is the next thing is spraying with pesticide. Now there are so many pesticide on the market that you can choose from, but I would recommend to use Asatec Plus because Asatec Plus kills 200 bugs in the garden, including spider mites, trips, uh, mealybugs, you name it. So Greg Steven is spraying. So I will show you uh, how he does. When you're spraying your plants, it's nice to have pressure that you can come from underneath like this and spray the bottom because this is where most of your Got a leak here. Uh oh. That's not good. You just tip on it? Nope. Put pressure, it'll make it come off faster. Most of your insects are going to be on the bottom side of the leaf with the exception of the Japanese beetles. You want to spray the flower buds. There's where your thrips will crawl inside of there and devour and ruin your flower buds. So when you spray, start from the top and work down. Then flip it up and work the bottom side of the leaf like this. Garden sprayers are really handy. It saves you a lot of time from squeezing a handle when you have a large amount of roses like we do that you have to spray. So he is using uh, an acetic concentrate, guys. So I got a leak in my hose here. Uh oh, oh, that's not good. Not good. I have to take it off and repair it with some glue. So he is spraying uh, this it the uh, roses. Hawkeye bell. And also after that, he is also going to spray the citrus. Now if you see a little black spot here and there. Best to remove it, but if it's deep in there where you're going to get pricked, just stick it up in there and do the bottom side of the leaf. It won't get rid of the black spot, but it will control it. Once you got black spot, you can't get rid of it. You can only control it. And when the leaves fall off into your garden, pick them up and dispose of them the right way, because they will get into your soil and cause systemic problems for your plants. So how often did you spray the uh, roses? Once a week. Once a week. So we're going to spray the calamansi. Calamansi is easy to spray because the leaves turn upward so they expose the bottom of the leaf making it easy spray even the top center of this piece of tape. Done. I want you to spray all of the citrus trees. This has got to come off choking out my this, this clematis is overrun the citrus. This is our citrus tangelo. Oh my goodness. 
this tree is don't break the branches getting from sun getting from sunlight it needs to move over yeah i had to i had to transfer that look at, look at my fruit getting sucked yeah into this did not this get tree. enough uh, sunlight So, <clears throat> so you can spray your citrus. Uh, this is going to get rid of other pests, so not just right now, spider mites. <laughs> I I will cut that that clematis down. So we don't have a spider mites problem here, as you can see, but you never know. You know, we are in the open area, so they can they can get into the citrus at no time. So that's what I said. This one here, oh, I break the branch when I was doing the when I was doing the uh, roses. I, I broke the branch of that citrus. Ooh, you're spraying me up here. Well, that's the risks of the job. Yeah, so your uh, this is your treatment when you have a spider mites. Uh, right now we are not treating spider mites. This is our prevention. We prevent uh, any pests coming, getting in contact to your to our citrus. You want to do this in the evening or early morning? You have to do it early in the morning like or in the evening, like what you do now, because uh, to avoid sunlight. Mm -hmm. So when you grow citrus, you cannot just plant your tree and leave it, you know, let the nature take care of it. You have to uh, inspect your tree at all time, uh, like it's like a regular uh, check up of your tree. Make sure that it is not stressed out because stress can, you know, can favor any pests and diseases to your, to your plant. So another thing that you can also to keep your uh, citrus from spider mites is increasing the humidity because if you increase the humi humidity levels, the spider mites won't get into your citrus. And by doing that is by watering your tree, you water, spray the leaves or uh, leaves and the soil. So if it is dry, water them. guys so I bring Greg Steven here with you he can uh, expand the, uh, the discussion on spider mite treatment and management on citrus trees now you said you have uh, how many spider mites you had tons of them <laughs> tons of them um, spider mites are probably the most difficult pest to rid your garden of they're tough as hell, <laughs> and they're hard to detect. So one of the easiest ways is stand back, stand back and look at your plant. And if you see a little, like a little spider web, like a little tiny thread going from one branch to another, that's a spider mite. Nine out of ten times, it's not a garden spider. Those are usually spider mites. And there's many different ways that you can detect if you have a spider mite. You can see speckling in the leaf. You can see the light. The leaf is turning yellow uh, from the insects sucking up the, the juice of the plant. They are mm -hmm. actually an arachnid. They're in the same. They're actually not a spider, but they're in the same family with spiders and scorpions, which is really kind of mm -hmm. creepy, right? The most common that we see in the garden is the double spotted or the twin spot 
uh, spider mite. It's kind of a clearish color with two little brown spots on the back. Those are the most common ones. Once in a while we see the red ones, mm -hmm. the red spider mites, and they're they're all they're all bad. Uh, there's you want to look at detecting it is the first thing you want to be able to do, identifying it, mm -hmm. and then what steps are you going to take to get rid of it? You can use harsh chemicals, you can use natural organic stuff like Azotec here is a natural, all natural product that gets rid of spider mites. And with any of the treatments that you use, with the exception of the biological, you're going to have to use multiple applications to er eradify your plant of spider mites because you've got, they're laying, you've got the adults there, the females are laying eggs. You kill the adult, then in a few couple days later, the eggs hatch out, and then you got the larval stage, and then you start all over again. So you have to break that cycle by mm -hmm. treating it, your plant for like every day for a week. To make sure you knock it out and then once you do get rid of all your spider mites weekly therapy treatments with all right we're up back on again <laughs> we had a little camera issue there getting back to the spider mites these little creatures are found all over the world they're not uh, indigenous to just one part they're worldwide and like a true spider they can also they can also shoot a web from one plant to another plant and start a new colony on the other side. Mm -hmm. Now, unlike some insects, these things reproduce with an incredible speed. Hundreds of eggs every week or so they will produce. Mm -hmm. And if you've got a lot of females doing that, you can have a huge colonies that can just devour your plant altogether. Now, once you got a spider mite, you're going to say, how am I going to get rid of these doggone things? Well, a lot of the stuff you buy in the stores, they don't work. Uh, they're, they're selling, uh, what do they call that? <laughs> um, Hydro. No, it's not. It's just like junk. It's, most of it is junk. But a lot of it is a high alcohol base, and that's all you're getting is, is uh, alcohol with some flavoring in it. The, the inorganic pesticides will work, but they can harm your plants and if it's something that you're going to eat or consume you definitely don't want that because your plant will absorb those chemicals and when you eat the fruit from the plant you're going to be taking the chemicals in your body and you definitely don't want that. Mm -hmm. um, so you can also, uh, you know, uh, pre preventing it, you can also uh, introduce uh, biological control. Yeah, not all spider mites eat your plants. There's also something called a predatory spider mite. You can buy these online by the thousands, and if you have um, an enclosure, you can put some of these spider mites, once these predator mites on your plants, they actually eat other spider mites. Mm -hmm. So that's one way that you can do it. Then you have your natural ladybugs will eat them, and mm -hmm. so will the lacewigs will eat them as well. You can buy these online as well. The problem is when we had a problem with spider mites a few years back in our greenhouse. That was so we five, bought five years ago? Yeah, about like 5,000 ladybugs and released them into the <laughs> greenhouse. And the only thing they were thinking about was trying to get out of there as fast as they could and get <laughs> fly all, away. All ladybugs. Yeah, all ladybugs. They're everywhere. They're in <laughs> all the crevices and cracks in the, uh, in the greenhouse and the plastics. And then later on we found out that if you're going to do that in a greenhouse, you, you have to have... You bought 50 of them, right? No, I bought 10,000 of them. Ladybugs? Yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> handfuls of them. And uh, you weren't paying attention that day, were you? No. <laughs> uh, you have to have certain plants in your greenhouse that the ladybugs mm -hmm. like to hang out in uh, mm -hmm. when there's no bugs. So if you don't have if you don't have aphids, if you don't have any predatory bugs, they're not going to stick around unless you, you provide for them and, and the, the food for them is your nasty insects that you have in there. Uh, we had. Ladybug larvae crawling on our plant the other day. Mama was spraying it with insecticide to kill them. I said, "Oh, Mama, you just you're killing ladybugs, baby ladybugs." And uh, she didn't. She'd never seen one before. This is the first time first she ever time saw uh, I, I a ladybug saw. larvae. Yeah, they're pretty cool. That's, uh, just, uh, that's strange because I've been doing a lot of pet mm -hmm. research, mm -hmm. and I run into that. I said, "Oh my God, now, that's what." That's here's it. here's another thing about with with mealybugs and. And uh, aphids and, week, uh, and no, uh, your strips, thri all these things. Yeah. They like to hide in the soil, and that's where a lot of times they'll go down there and lay eggs down in the soil. Your uh, 
spider mites lay their eggs on the bottom side of the leaves, and uh, they will they will protect them as much as they can. Along help with ants. Ants are their buddies. Uh, their buddies will protect them because they like the honeydew that they secrete. But uh, you don't want to you don't want to ignore the soil because a lot of your insects and your spider mites as well go down into the soil. So you want to make sure you treat the soil as well. One way is to replace all the soil completely, rinse and wash all your roots off completely, repot the plant, and start from scratch again. How about your books? Do you know, introduce your books? You got books here? Yeah. We have books online for you. Um, and also we have a new book on spider mites. Got a new book on spider mites going to be coming uh, out here in a week or so. The so book is completed. We're waiting for the cover to be finished. So you will understand the nature of the spider yeah. mites. You got Ultimate Citrus Leaf Troubleshooting Manual which you can take a look at your leaf, compare it with the one in here, it'll mm. tell you what's so wrong. So this is really great in diagnosing and yeah, you're diagnosing, you're diagnosing your plants. Uh, sometimes you don't, you don't know how, how it looks like, so this is very helpful. This is on citrus pests, all the different pests that you get on citrus, um, all the way from the ciliate mm. pest to the spider mites and so forth as well. And the disease. Now the, I got one on diseases too. I have another uh, man another manual book that's coming out. It's only about spider mites. It's called Spider Mite Bible. It's got everything in there about spider mites, and you might want to grab a book of that. It's nice to have mm -hmm. because one of the biggest comments that people ask us on our channel, YouTube channel, is how do you get rid of these things? They are, they're killing my plant. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the first time that I've heard uh, from a friend of mine at work at the big nursery is that the plants that they're getting in, especially from Florida right now, are yeah. loaded with spider mites and mealybugs. And they th haven't found anything in the nursery that really gets rid of these things without mm -hmm. killing the plant. Now with anything, even with even with the Azatec, with the Azatec Plus, when you have never tried this on a plant before, you want to test it on a couple leaves and then check it in the morning. No problem with citrus. This stuff works great on citrus. As you just mm -hmm. watched me with the big sprayer, I drench, I drench the plants with that, and uh, it leaves the residue from the oil of the neem on the plant. They don't want that. Especially, and we had, this is the first year we've had a problem with Japanese beetles too. Mm -hmm. The Japanese beetles are attacking the roses. They don't attack the citrus, but they're attacking the roses. And once I put a heavy spray on the on the roses, and I actually watch the. Japanese beetles will come and land on it. Two seconds later, boom, they're going off. They're, they're, they're taken away. They don't like the taste or the smell of the, of the uh, neem oil and some of the other proprietary blended mm -hmm. ingredients we put in there, which I cannot mm -hmm. share with you. That's a secret. Um, but if you want the, the book on spider mites, I'd grab one of those as soon as mm -hmm. it comes online. It's, it's, it's not published yet. Though. Not yet. I, the book is finished. Just waiting for it to uh, to get the cover. We, uh, we use fiber for our book covers, and it takes about a week for us to get them from our, our uh, dude that makes these for us. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. Watch, mm -hmm. watch our watch videos our to video. the end because a lot of time we put some cool stuff in there. A lot of time people are ready to go. So to oh, here's another thing I want to show you. This is our proprietary blend. This is a premium citrus potting mix. And mm -hmm. the reason why it is a proprietary blend because it has stuff in here that your other potting companies don't put in there. Why? Too expensive. And ours is a little bit cheaper than what the big boys are because we can do it. They can't. They've got too many people on payroll to pay. Mm -hmm. They've got too many uh, marketing stuff going on. So we can beat them in the price by about three or four dollars a bag. Mm -hmm. Same amount, but better, better mm -hmm. in here. This so even has it helps your citrus. This even has a gre ingredient here that uh, that eliminates fungus rot on your roots. This is the one that I use in my container, <coughs> which is mycorrhizae and mm -hmm. your. Um, neem powder, which is uh, your, the leaves of the neem tree, ground up into a real fine powder. Mm -hmm. Put it in there and your bugs, your, your fungus gnats, and all your other bugs, they won't go in there and lay their eggs in there mm -hmm. as long as that stuff is in there. Eventually, eventually over time, from watering, it, it will eventually wash out, and you might just have to repot your plant again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to, uh, to sum this up, <laughs> you need so, to treat the spider mites, the first thing you know, you need your preventative measure, which is hosing your plants because spider mites they don't like water. Don't like water. Uh, they like dry, hot weather. And then check your plants regularly. That is your preventative. You, you, you have to avoid the infestation. 
and then you also introduce some of the you know some of the predators in your area in your on your citrus that's your prevention and then if you have the infestation going on then you have to treat right. the, the plant properly so, so what do you guys call that in your agricultural school where you have a biological thing going on and you have other treatments, a mix, a mix of different types oh, of treatments. Oh, that is crop rotation. No, not crop rotation. I mean, you're mixing the pest management, insect pest management system. The integrated, yeah, the integrated pest management. Yeah, you're integrating the all IPM? these different techniques yeah. from from crop rotation and changing the soil mm -hmm. right, and integrating your biological bugs, mm -hmm. your your beneficial bugs into your garden. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do all that stuff. You got your predator wasps that work as well. Not so much for spider mites. They're too small for those, though. But they will yeah. work on. So using the using the uh, harmful chemicals, that would be your last choice. But the Asatic Plus will kill that bug. You just have to make sure you apply it properly. And when you have that heavy infestation, you need to treat it uh, according to the direction, and then apply it seven day cycle because its bugs have different cycle. That is why many uh, gardeners ask me, Marcelina. I treated my mil my uh, what is spider mites. I thought it was gone, but it came back. So meaning that it is not properly treated. You have to treat it accordingly, and then make sure that you you don't stop it. So even if you the infestation is gone, you use this Asatic Plus as your daily routine. You can spray once a week or once, once a week. Once a week. Once a week. Yeah, that's what I do here in the garden, and I think that's. For about it. Guys, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe, guys. Join Go down us. below there and click that subscribe button and give it a give it a like because the more likes we get, YouTube doesn't become selfish with the uh, printout. What do they call that when the uh, impressions? The impressions. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. So, so I include so in my video you will see Greg uh, most of the time because this is our channel and uh, we both working together to keep our garden. Uh, it's a lot of work, right? Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of work. work. So, so again, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget again, don't forget to subscribe. And peace, peace out, baby. <laughs>